Welcome to our virtual public art tour where we visit some local art spots here in Jefferson City. Let's start off at the Capitol, which is home to an outstanding collection of fountains, monuments, and memorials. On the south side of the Capitol, you will find the Thomas Jefferson sculpture, as well as many sculptures and fountains by Robert Aitken. The fountains are known as the Fountain of the Arts and the Fountain of the Sciences. When walking from the south side of the Capitol to the north side, you'll find all kinds of art treasures throughout the grounds. They were all installed at different times and hold different meanings of their own. Now walking to the north side, you will notice that a lot of the artworks on the north side take you way back in history. You will find many different monuments as well as a big centerpiece called the Fountain of the Centers, designed by Adolf Weinman and sculpted at the DeWitt Ward Studio. This piece of art was installed in 1927 and is a local favorite, especially in the summer months when the fountains are going. Now past the fountains, you will also see a very large circular structure. This is the Missouri Law Enforcement Memorial. It's a beautiful structure to honor those. Now also on the other side of the fountain, you can take a stroll down the Missouri Veterans Memorial. You can go year by year and look at all the wars and see the time frames. Now when you walk down the Veterans Memorial, you will end at the fountain that gives you a beautiful view of the front of the Capitol. This is one of my favorite areas and just also a block away is one of my favorite pieces which is the Lewis and Clark Monument at the Lewis and Clark Trailhead Plaza, installed in June 2008 by artist Sabra Meyer. Now, did you know that the upper waterfall of the monument represents the 21 major rivers and streams the expedition encountered on the way west? I love when they have all kinds of hidden meetings that you have to look and find. Now, if you head down Capitol Avenue, home of Portfest JCMO, and run into another local art piece, Dissident, created by artist Ben Pierce. Dissident was commissioned by the Cultural Arts Commission through the Sculpture on the Move program. Now, after Capitol Avenue, hit the cross streets and head towards downtown. You'll cross paths with a big te Hit the cross streets and head towards downtown. You'll cross paths with a big teddy bear, Jefferson State Office Building Bear by sculptor Bernard Fraser, located at 205 Jefferson Street. When heading towards downtown, make sure you stop at the public library. Hi, this is Natalie from Missouri River Regional Library. And today we wanted to come and talk to you about all of the different programs, events, and resources that we have right here at the library. Now, before COVID, uh, there were a lot of different things that we were able to do. We had art shows in our gallery featuring local artists as well as artists from around Missouri. We had all kinds of author visits and talks, music in the library, different concerts. We've even had a wine tasting. Now, obviously in this post COVID world, things look a little bit different, but we're still here to provide all kinds of resources for you and others in our community. All you need is your free library card, which you can sign up for either in the library or on our website. But what do we have going on? What can you expect as we kind of move forward? Well, we have done a great job, I think, of pivoting in this world. And, you know, our music in the library has now become virtual concerts. We just hosted one uh, earlier this week, and you can see it on our website. We also have our author talks that are happening online, including with our Capital Read author talk. So this year's Capital Read is happening virtually, and there's a ton of programs with that. You can definitely get more information on our website. We also have a ton of take and make crafts, something that we've never done before, but we are loving. You can pick up a kit based off the age. So we have stuff for kids, teens, adults. And then when you go home, we will show you in a YouTube video how to create that, how to create that craft. So we're really excited about the new things that we have been able to do. There are some things that are still the same. We do have our first Friday film and our real life cinema uh, movie showings. They do require reservations and for any in-person programming, we do ask that you wear a mask. Um, but we're excited to be able to continue to reach our community in that way. And then of course, our resources. Obviously we have books, but we also have movies and music, things you can check out and bring home and enjoy from the comfort of your own home. So if you've not stopped by and checked out things from the library, we hope that you will come visit us soon. We do offer curbside if you're uncomfortable coming inside. You just have to go to our website, reserve the materials. We will let you know when they're available and then bring them right out to your car. It's very easy and safe. But we also have things spaced out inside. We do request that you wear a mask when you come in, uh, but we try to have everything spread out so everything is as safe as possible. 
So no matter how it is that you want to use your library, we hope that we will see you soon. Not too far from the library, you will find an Eagle Sculpture Memorial in front of the Cole County Circuit Court. You can also make sure you stop by the Veterans Plaza. The Veterans Plaza purpose is to honor any area veteran who honorably served in the United States military, Coast Guard, or Merchant Marines. If you pop over to City Hall, you'll also find another cool piece of art commissioned by the Cultural Arts Commission. The Cultural Arts Commission solicited artists to submit designs for an in-ground installation. Now, also down the street, if you go a little bit further, you'll find the Greenway Arch, which is the East Branch Trailhead at Marshall Street, installed in 2017, designed and constructed by Nichols Career Center students and instructor Kenny Thomas. Before leaving downtown, make sure you check out some projects and let's hear from the foundation. Hello, we're the Jefferson City Arts Foundation. The foundation is a non-for-profit organization that was created nearly eight years ago to culturally enhance more the livability of our beautiful city. Art initiatives that might not exist if not for the Arts Foundation are prioritized. A 13-member board, some of which you'll see on this video, meet regularly to fundraise and create events create public art installations, educational programs, and partnerships with other public organizations in town. Raising awareness about the importance of art in improving the quality of daily life is exhibited in the many activities and programs of the foundation, and some of them are. A new free to the general public splash park concept was generated seven plus years ago by folks who would soon represent the newly formed Arts Foundation. Locations, styles, and fundraising efforts were discussed at length. A successful grant was written to the Department of Natural Resources, which would provide for a new bathroom, splash area, and a greenway entrance. The ice cream splash was organized to raise funds, and meetings began with the community center board to possibly house the splash area in the community park itself, located at Dunklin and Lafayette Streets. The Department of Park and Recreation soon became interested in expanding the neglected park concept and adding other amenities such as state-of-the-art play equipment and larger splash area, and so much more. Have to thank Ken Littlefield at Central Bank for catching the vision and being our first major supporter and followed by Dave Minton at Central Bank, who carried it forward. American UE, Scholastic, and Missouri American Water, all major sponsors who started the ball rolling for support for the new splash area. Many, many thanks. And the rest is history. The next project was and is critical to the formation of the splash area at the community park. The Make a Wave, Make a Difference Tribute Bricks project is an ongoing fundraising effort of the Arts Foundation. It is and has been the primary source of funding for the splash area of the newly upgraded historic community park. Over 80 bricks have been permanently placed in the prominent landscaped tribute garden adjacent to the new water splash area in the park. The custom bricks are engraved with requested names, dates, and or messages, and can be purchased from $250 and are tax deductible. Bricks can be purchased by going to the Jefferson City Arts Foundation Facebook page, where you can order your own brick. The Arts Foundation commissioned Chris Felber, a local metal art sculptor, to create two 14-foot metal cone flowers and small attached mushrooms. They've been recently installed this month at the entrance of the newly refurbished community park. The design concept began with a generous donation of funds from the American Missouri Water Company, and then followed with four decommissioned fire hydrants to be included in the metal sculptures. The Department of Parks and Recreation kindly offered the use of one of their shops and equipment to assist with the sculpture's construction and painting. The design concept was based on honoring the reblooming of the community park with native Missouri flowers Cone flowers, which are perennially resilient and beautiful. We are excited to be currently working again to, with Chris on a new sculpture for Riverside Park. The African American History Panel. 
as part of the Missouri Department of Natural Resources grant written by the foundation and facilitated through Jeff City Park. We were able to secure $150,000 for the newly refurbished community park. Included in the grant, $2,000 were allocated for creating historical signage related to the decade-long African-American history in the foot area surrounding the community park. The foundation has been partnering with the Missouri Department of Transportation to offer a total of six three by eight foot historical panels to be installed along the greenway near the park. A dedicated volunteer committee has worked for the past three years to research the rich African-American experience from coming to Jefferson City in the 1800s through Lowman Landing, then to Hog Alley in Midtown, and then on to the foot area, named for an area at the foot of Lincoln University. We are hoping these panels will be installed this fall. Portals of History, a project the foundation initiated several years ago, which highlights the beautiful homes along Capitol Avenue through art. These homes, some of which have sadly been destroyed in the most recent tornado, housed the most prominent families in Jefferson City who were instrumental in the building of this fine city. Eight electrical boxes along the avenue are wrapped with art reproductions of the home's entrances by local artist and historic preservationist, Marianne Hall. Each drawing was chosen to represent different historic styles of architecture of the buildings in this beautiful historic district and they add to the many, many major improvements made by the city to Capitol Avenue recently. This project grew to include another program. The historic walking tour was a project undertaken by the Jefferson City Arts Foundation and underwritten through the Missouri Humanities Council. A $10,000 matching grant was awarded to the foundation for the purpose of developing a historic walking tour app for smartphones for the Jefferson City community. The application is geared for residents and travelers of the city and is now live and available to download on both the Apple and Google app stores. The app features many historic sites across the city of prominent historical figures, such as Ivy Terrace, the home of Lawrence Vest Stevens, who served as Missouri State Treasurer and later as Governor of Missouri in the late 1890s. It is now undergoing a major renovation. Additionally, you will find a few more sites, such as the Carnegie Library, the State Penitentiary, the Loman Opera House, and many, many more. Come experience the history through text, narration, and videos. Learn more about the app on our Facebook page. The Jefferson City Arts Foundation and the City of Jefferson Cuban Relations Commission are excited to announce the launch of our newest program called DIVE. DIVE stands for Different, Interesting, Variety, and Everyone. This new art and social justice program educates and celebrates our various skin tones. With the help of our sponsors like Walmart, Jefferson City Public Schools Foundation, and the Jefferson City Arts Foundation, we are donating up to 40 packs of Crayola multicultural crayons to preschools and daycares in our area. Along with these crayons comes a lesson plan for educators, a coloring activity, and also a take home, ask and share activity for parents and caregivers to continue the conversation at home. If you would like to get involved with this program, please reach out to us at info at jeffersoncityartsfoundation.org. The first mural with this project will be on a building owned by Ron Dawson, who has generously offered the exterior of his building, the old Milo Walls Blattner Furniture Store, 704 Madison. Before COVID, the Arts Foundation was working with art students from all the high schools, public and private, to create a high quality mural in the historic old Munichburg area. Currently, many of the parents of students are hesitant to have their children participate in a group exercise, so the Arts Foundation is refocusing the project and will hopefully now include adult artists. There is an open invitation to anyone wishing to work on this outdoor mural installation. The intent is to complete it before the cool weather sets in or, if necessary, next spring. 
The Art Foundation commissioned several years ago an outdoor mural at 302 East High Street, which depicts the colorful history, past and present, of High Street. The mural is located in the Gundelfinger Pocket Park across from the old courthouse building. Dennis Holliday, a notable local mural artist, created an expansive scene of looking down Jefferson City's main downtown street through the years. The mural illustrates several past significant historic events that happened downtown. Dennis's recognizable painting style can be viewed on other public art murals throughout the city. Take a stroll down High Street and enjoy Dennis's detailed art style. Holy Guacamole is an annual event that the foundation started last year where teams made up of different businesses and organizations around Jefferson City compete for the best guacamole recipe. Numerous awards are given, both judges' choice and people's choice. Snack on some chips and guac, sip on a margarita, and enjoy the entertainment. Proceeds from our event benefit the many projects of the Arts Foundation. Learn more about the event and check out when the next one is on our Facebook page. For the past five years, the Jefferson City Arts Foundation has sponsored the Ice Cream Splash. This is a downtown, family-friendly, all-you-can-eat ice cream festival. The Pink Shirt Brigade, made up of eight volunteers and their spouses, successfully organized this event to raise funds to build the water splash area at the community park. There's music, there's activities for the kids, and of course, ice cream from local vendors. Midwest Living Magazine even listed this event as one of the notable events to attend in Jefferson City. In 2021, we look forward to bringing the Ice Cream Splash back to you to continue to raise funds to build new projects that will serve Jefferson City residents. We look forward to seeing you in 2021. The Jefferson City Art Foundation's Hope Fountain honoring persons impacted by cancer is installed on High Street in the pass-through walkway adjacent to the old Safi's building. Over 100 customized tribute tiles have been placed during the past couple of years on this permanent outdoor living public art venue. The Hope Fountain was designed by local architect Carrie Gamfer and glass tiles created by local glass artist Andrea Clayton. J.C. Parks installed the fountain and has generously agreed to assume the long-term care of the fountain by deeming it a pocket park, which brings it under the citywide park structure, a partnership that ensures the fountain will be maintained in perpetuity with the care the installation requires. The Living Fountain can display new tiles at any time as the fountain has been built to expand as new tiles are installed. Customized glass tiles and stone nameplates to honor a survivor or one who lost the battle to a specific cancer can be purchased anytime online by visiting our Facebook page or stopping by the Fountain or Carrie's Hallmark to pick up an order form. Please help us honor our loved ones by visiting the Hope Fountain on your next downtown trip. The Hope Fountain and High Street Mural are right in the middle of downtown area. While taking a stroll, make sure to check out the other art venues and organizations such as the Capital City Cinema. Hi, I'm Mike Downey, Capital City Cinema Board Member. We're a 501c3 nonprofit in downtown Jefferson City, Missouri at 126 East High Street. Our mission as an organization is to educate inspire, entertain, and connect our community through innovative film programming and film-related events. This weekend, you can watch Ethan Hawke in Tesla, playing today at 2 p.m. The story of a visionary inventor, Nikola Tesla, fighting an uphill battle to bring his revolutionary electrical system to fruition. Don't forget to purchase your tickets online at capitalcitycinema.org. And while you're there, view what we're doing to keep our staff and community safe with our COVID guidelines, one of which is requiring masks while in our theater. Next up, a series of specially curated horror films throughout October. Visit our website to see more about that. As far as events, we've got a lot going on. We're hosting our next art and culture series episode featuring Henri Matisse, on Wednesday, October 13th, a drag show on Saturday, October 17th, a media literacy workshop on Saturday, October 24th, and an election night watch party on Tuesday, November 3rd. We're still working out the details, but we're hoping to finalize Hocus Pocus on the big screen soon. Visit our website, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, 
and subscribe to our newsletter to keep up to date on what we've got on tap for our community. The Freedom Corner at the intersection of High and McCarty Streets. The tribute features a 14 foot tall stone and granite monument topped by a bronze eagle in flight. A few streets down, you'll find Ellis Porter Riverside Park, home of Soccer Dude by Gonz Jovi. This Soccer Dude sculpture is the second sculpture to be homed at Riverside Park through the Sculpture on the Move program. Also, mentioned earlier by the Jefferson City Arts Foundation is the newest public art in JCMO, the Cone Flowers by Chris Felber. While at the park, you'll see not far Lincoln University, which is the home to a very special piece of art, the Soldiers Memorial Plaza at Lincoln University, to commemorate one of the most significant and selfless acts of empowerment, inspiration, and commitment to higher education and history, Lincoln University developed, constructed, and dedicated the Lincoln University Soldiers Memorial Plaza. A common sight in Jefferson City is a metal sculpture named Joy. The sculpture is a mother lifting up her daughter. The sculpture is by Dan Howarth. Now keep the wheels a turning and keep driving in circles to the next roundabout not far away. Here you cannot miss the Healing Hand Sculpture by Mike Missler and Jim Wish, which was for Capital Region Hospital. Now also at Capital Region Medical Center, you will find a butterfly sculpture that represents hope and life's journey. Now this landmark is just the right outside the doors of the main entrance. Now, at St. Mary's Hospital, not too far away, you will also find another sculpture by Sabra, which is called Stella Maris. Stella Maris is Latin for the Star of the Sea.